Okay, so what I've done here is I've got my indicator set back up because I want to travel in. I was going to use 3 8 as my distance down this side. The other ones I've done looks like I did 400. So I'm just going to do 400 down this side. But first, I'm going to take a very light facing cut along this face. And I've already set my indicator to zero. And from that point, I'll travel 400. Then I will set my carriage stop back here to that 400 mark. Then cut down about a half an inch. Because this is about 890 when it's done on one side. And I want to leave 3 eighths behind. So 515 winds up being the measurement I've got to take out of it. So I'm just going to use 500 and keep the math even. In case I've got to do any little bit of a change anywhere else. But 3 eighths of an inch. And I could even do a little bit more. Just for safe, safekeeping basically. Uh, I've got the whole thing you know, in diameter. I can... I can drill four holes in it, drill hole six holes in it, eight holes, whatever I need if this thread strip out. So I'm just going to cut down the 500, I think, and, and just be done with it. So we'll start that process now. So there's my facing cut at zero. So I just got the uh, just got it turned down a little bit. Don't know how much of it I got, of course, because the thing shut off on me again. see where I'm at. So I'll take another I'll take it down to four so it's like fifty. Thank 
doing okay, so that should be a few hundred thousand sidewall. It's not, it's 430. Sorry, that's a little wonky. Yep. There's 380. That's close enough for me. So I am going to turn it in just a little bit to make this last cut. So that's a 20 right there. And I want to back cut this wall. So I've set it. I remember now. Well, it was 5 before. That's almost zero. So I gave it ten thousandths to go ahead and cut that back wall. So I'll run that back up to the 20 mark. And I'll get close here. That should be right where I was at. It is. So I'm going to just give myself a few thousandths to cut. Then when I get back to this wall back here, then I'll go ahead and feed in, then feed out. And I'll feed out by hand. That gives me a nice shoulder right there. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and drill and tap a hole here, quarter 20, or quarter 28, uh, a fine thread set screw. I want a fine thread in this aluminum. And, uh, then I can actually turn this around and mount it onto the pulley whenever, or the, yeah, the, the flywheel now, the pulley's gone, but the flywheel, 
mount the flywheel into this, put this onto the flywheel after I saw a little bit off the back here. Then I can face it to the length I want, which would be right at the edge of that pulley. Then, uh, then I can actually start cutting the pulley grooves into it. All right, we're back here. And I'm getting ready to drill and tap this hole for the pulley. Well, I've got an indicator set up here. I've done some preliminary work. I've already got my tap and drill and all that kind of stuff picked out and ready to go. Well, one thing I wanted to show you. I've already got my line set of how far over that distance between you know, this edge oops, and this edge so the distance between this edge and this edge is about 410 thousandths so I roughly split it as you can see I've got a scribe line there with my indicator on it and I'm going to drill a hole there and tap it quarter 28 well, for centering up that particular area in X, of course, I just used a, a center drill, used it as a pointer to line up my line. Well, for Y, back and forth this way, I set this tip of this indicator on the part and I move the part back and forth. And you'll find the high spot. If you watch the indicator, as I wheel it back and forth, you can see as it takes off that direction, moving it one way, going the other way, it comes back, and it takes off that direction again. So the high point, which you kind of have to fiddle with just a little bit to get it there, that would be roughly center. So that's one way you can do that. The other way, if you had an edge finder and a V-block, or you could even find the edge of this side of the part and the edge of this side of the part, divide it by two, of course, that'll give you the center location. Uh, if you had it in a big V-block, you could do that on the sides of the V-block and get it more precise. But this has always worked for me, and this is not an application where it's absolutely 100% critical, but it does help if it's in the middle. And of course, lastly, <laughs> you never want to turn the machine on when that thing's inside of it. That could be, you lose a lot of parts that way. At least lose an indicator. So I'll go ahead and get this set up to drill, then I will drill and tap the hole. So I've got my spotting drill installed, and now I'm just going to spot it. Then I'll use a number three drill bit to drill for the tap. And that's all that's needed. I don't know if you guys ever used any of this stuff before, this pinkish or bluish goo that the uh, Boeing sells, it's called Bolube. You can pick it up on Amazon or you can pick it up on uh, skygeeks.com. It's not very expensive, anywhere from 8 to 20 something dollars, you know, for a tub, you know, good sized tub whatever it was, 8-12 ounces. Uh, of course, I use it at work, but uh, I've learned to, uh, it works so well that I've gone ahead and bought my own uh, from Sky Geeks, and I tell you what, that's some, that's some really great stuff.
both to drill and tap the hole. So you might be wondering why I'm chucking this up in the drill chuck to tap the hole. Well, I'm not going to do it under power. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use this since I haven't moved anything. I've got a starter tap in here of a quarter 28. And I'm just going to start it by hand. Then I'll finish it up on the bench. Or in a vise. Running this tap through it. Then, uh, then I'll run a bottom tap to make sure I've cleared the threads. Everything will be all good. On this pulley, this is the motor pulley that we're sliding our aluminum pulley onto, I couldn't do the same thing as far as setting the indicator facing me because there wasn't enough room because I've got to drill and tap a hole back here and I'll show you that here in a second but I was still able to get by with it because since my table slides back and forth in X I can take the I can put it on center out here then use my drill bit or a center drill which I don't have an extended length center drill I'll be sure to get one short soon uh, but anyway, I'll use my drill bit to basically center up my mark, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But on this side, of course, I had to set the needle up, you know, straight up, so I could see it move. But that works pretty good for that. And that'll get, get what I need done, done. So I'll set the, the drill bit up and I'll uh, show you why where I need to drill okay I've got the drill bit set to where I want it to drill and I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as the lines so this line represents the depth of these threads back here to the back now from this line to the rest of the pulley to the to the back side back here this area it's all smooth so since this area between here and here is smooth on the inside I'm going to drill and tap a hole here to put another quarter 28 set screw so on this smooth portion of the shaft I'll grind a flat for this set screw to set against and it will keep this pulley from being able to be rotated off in the reverse direction. So since I don't have a extended center drill again, then uh, I'll just take it easy right here and and just pick drill until I get it started, then drill the hole. I'm sure that drill bit's well used so so since I can't start it uh, the tap this way either I don't have the proper setup for that I'm just gonna have to put this in a vise and uh, do my go my best shot at it it's not very thick so it won't be too bad plus this is an old set of adjustable parallels I found at an estate sale. Makes a good backup whenever you're doing something like this. <laughs> 